that bun. Drop a sign. Down. You all right there, ladies and gents? How's it going? I posted a couple of pictures on Instagram recently showing uh, two of my different helmet setups and uh, helmet audio setups basically because I've been experimenting with some bits and bobs. I recently got hold of a Rode Wireless Go microphone and I set that up on my off-road helmet as I'd been having some audio issues and I really wanted to uh, have a setup where I could keep the camera sealed and dry and that seemed like a, a, a good solution to uh, have an experiment with at least but I also like really clean motor vlogging setups and I recently got hold of a new Nishua Enduro Carbon so I've done a, a new setup on that too utilising the Hero 8 and the old mic adapter from the 5, 6 and 7 and I've done an incredibly neat setup on it. I'm really quite pleased with how it's turned out. And that's the setup I'm wearing at the moment. So um, yeah, if the audio is good, it's because that's good. But that's not just good because of the audio being good. It's good just because of how tidy it is. I really, really like it. Um, very minimalistic. Sorry, I've uh, got very little confidence on this bike in the wet. As the last time I rode this bike, I nearly broke my wrist because I binned it. So um, yeah, I'm just riding a bit cautiously. <laughs> got someone right up my chuff as well oh well they've backed off a bit now um uh, yeah so i've had a few people comment on how i did those setups so i thought i'd put this little video together for you um as someone else had also recently asked me how i ran my audio in my helmets anyway so it kind of makes sense to to do all this now i've got some new stuff like I say, I'm really hoping this audio is coming out well because otherwise it's not exactly a great advert for uh, my ability to set up a motor vlogging helmet. But this is my first time using it, so I might need to work on the microphone placement a little bit. But anyway, um, we're going to head back to the classroom, back to my office, and uh, I'll show you what these helmets look like. Okay, so uh, the first crush helmet I'm going to show you is my Nishua Enduro Carbon. Now this is an adventure crush helmet, but it uh, has a peak which you can remove and I, I just take the peak off because I don't have an adventure bike. Um, and at speed it just adds noise and uh, a little bit of lift to the crush helmet. So it's more aerodynamic with it removed, so I take it off. But one of the reasons I like adventure lids is because generally speaking, you get quite a large chin area, which means that the sound is a little bit nicer on the microphone inside the crash helmet. The Nishua is also carbon fiber, which makes it really, really lightweight, which means once you add all these bolt-on bits and bobs, that it doesn't weigh the crash helmet down too much. Um, and I'd say this setup here is actually lighter than my track day crash helmet without any cameras on. And that's not a heavy crash helmet. It's just carbon fibre. It's, it's, it's light. It's super light, as it says on the <laughs> sticker there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what we've got here is the Nishura Enduro Carbon in road set up with no peak. And uh, then on the front, we've got a GoPro Hero 8 Black with the GoPro Hero 5, 6 and 7 microphone adapter. Now this is a brand new adapter, I, I got this one recently because I thought I was having some issues with my other one and uh, I just wanted to uh, have a fresh setup for this crash helmet. I don't know if the other ones are broken or whether this one is uh, going to be any better on audio and stuff like that. But I, I did have a little bit of a problem with clicks and pops and bangs from my previous setups. So I thought, go with clean, got a new camera, get a new mic adapter and put in, obviously, a new microphone into the crash helmet too. On the front, I've mounted the camera using Suguru. I really like the stuff. It means that you can get a proper central mounting point on any shape of crash helmet. It's not for everyone because it is pretty much a permanent affixation, uh, but because I've used a GoPro adapter, I can at least take the camera off, even if I can't take the GoPro mount off without getting the knives out and cutting it off but it's a neat solution and it works for me because uh, yeah, I've always got a camera stuck to my head. Okay, so the GoPro Hero 8 is a cracking little camera. It's the best out there, I think, currently as far as image quality goes and the sound is nice 
when it's in the environment it was designed for. Now all the microphones on here are absolutely rubbish the moment you add 50, 60, 70 mile per hour winds. So uh, yeah, we need to sort out in helmet audio. That's whether you speak into the microphone or not. It just takes away that wind noise. To do that, I fitted a Ulanzi GP8-7 door, which allows you to keep the battery compartment sealed up and still plug in your microphone adapter into the USB-C at the bottom. It makes it a lot easier for doing battery changes. I really am not a fan of the media mod in a motor vlogging environment. I don't think it's the best choice. And uh, if you can go with this, if you're happy with having this audio adapter on your crash helmet, then this is possibly the best, neatest solution. I have media mods, I've got two of them because I've got two Hero 8s. And uh, yeah, I wish, I wish I'd only bought one of them. They're really good for vlogging off bike. Um, the shotgun mic is great, but as a motor vlogger, the fact that it's got that three and a half millimeter jack on the back isn't a good enough selling point. It makes the camera huge, it isn't waterproof, and the three and a half mil uh, jack on the back there, the socket, it feels cheap and I don't trust the connection. And I think that's one of the things that was causing me some crackles and pops in audio on previous videos in the past. Okay, so um, obviously I've just detached that. I've then got the microphone adapter Velcroed onto the side of the crash helmet. And then here at the back, I've got my three and a half inch jack uh, with the microphone going in through a side vent on the crash helmet. You can see the side vent there. And then into the front of the crash helmet here. Now I've put some fur inside this uh, the chin piece and that adds as wind protection too. It gets a bit skanky um, so you might want to change that periodically if you do this but that just stops a lot of the wind noise coming in from underneath the, the crash helmet. As you can see here I've got my microphone which is a bendy VoIP thing very much like this one here. These are really cheap. Um, they break but they're really cheap so it doesn't matter. I've stuck on a uh, furry dead cat and what I do is I bend that around and just have it resting up against the cheek piece and that seems to work quite well for me in conjunction with the, uh, the chin shield. That's pretty much my basic setup for if you're using the Hero 8 with the Hero 5, 6 or 7 microphone adapter and this is by far the cleanest setup I've done because I've been able to get the microphone into the crash helmet through one of the side vents. Uh, I like that because it means that there's no wire coming down here which was another pinch point effectively on your setup and whenever you hit that when you move your head and it hits your shoulder pads and stuff like that on your jacket it can cause crackles and pops and well yeah it just just causes problems. So this I'm pleased with this setup it might not be for you a lot of people hate these adapters um, but there's alternatives I'm just going to show you one of them now so if you don't fancy using a microphone adapter the media mod or the uh, old style one from the 5 6 or 7 then how are you going to get your audio well there's a couple of options you can get yourself a voice recorder and run a microphone from your crash helmet down to this and have this in your pocket which is fine, but it does mean then that your crash helmet is connected to your pocket via a, via a cable that snaps quite easily. I do that on track days normally because it's a simple solution to get in helmet audio when I'm not allowed to strap a camera to my crash helmet. So it works, it's good. Using a voice recorder means you can get your gain set just right for the type of microphone you're using and stuff. And uh, yeah, as long as your microphone isn't being overpowered inside your crash helmet, you're golden, I think. You're pretty damn golden. And uh, it's a great little setup, this. But, like I say, it means that you are then, your head is attached to your pocket via a wire. And when I'm green naming, I don't really like the idea of that. It's an extra snag hazard, and I don't really like the idea of a branch catching that. And one, snapping the microphone cable, because then you've got no audio. Um, and two, it could 
potentially cause me to come off the motorcycle. So we want to go wireless. So to eliminate my need to have the crash helmet wired to my jacket pocket with the microphone cable, I've got myself a Rode Wireless Go, which the receiver just clicks on to the audio jack on your voice recorder. And then uh, this is paired with a transmitter, which is on my crash helmet. And uh, then that will transmit the audio it receives to that with adjustable gain. And then uh, I can pair up this audio later when I'm editing. So between the Rode transmitter and the microphone in the crash helmet, I've attached one of these, which is a speaker inline volume control. Which means just by spinning that, I can adjust the volume of my microphone going down to those recorders to just that sweet spot. Because this is only rated for a certain power output, I have to make sure I don't cause clipping from the transmitter side and also want to uh, avoid clipping of me when I'm gobbing off down the microphone. So it allows me to tailor that just right for the different helmet setups that I use this on. The GoPro Hero 8, as you can see, is still all fully sealed up, so that's nice and waterproof, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, but what we have here is the Rode transmitter going into that uh, speaker volume control through a vent and down inside the crash helmet we've got a microphone here which actually is a really dinky little thing it's literally a jack with a microphone on the end um, and then plugging that into the, uh, the the speaker volume control i've got a couple of cable ties holding it all in place so it's nice and secure without gummy tape and stuff all inside the crash helmet holding everything together i don't mind having the tape but when it gets a bit sticky and you touch it and with breath and sweat and stuff it just makes you crash on it and not a nice environment so cable ties for me on this setup where i am getting particularly grubby and horrible um, but yeah that's this setup now i'm going to put a clip in from my last ride showing the audio from this and obviously with the introduction on this video you're getting the audio from my road setup not my road setup but my road helmet setup utilizing the hero 567 microphone adapter you all right there ladies and gents how the hell is it going we are back we are out we're out on force mr fish big pizza andy and we're off to meet lamb chops as well taking a few lanes on the way there but yes we're back we're on the lanes baby how awesome is this there is no right or wrong way of doing your audio for motor vlogging, but getting that quality is more important than your video quality. I still say work on your video quality too, uh, but if you get your audio right, so it's not shouty, it's not clipping, and you're not getting clicks and pops and bangs from bad connections and stuff like that, it will really help you and more people will want to listen to you if the audio is, is clear. Sometimes all this can make it sound a little bit uh, I don't know, studio. So you do want to have a little bit of wind noise and uh, um, sense of speed with it and engine noise and things like that. So having the quietest crash helmet in the world isn't always the best idea because you get no feel from that. You, you can't hear the emotion of the engine as it revs and screams and you don't get that sense of speed if you've got no wind noise at all. So you do need to have a balance of all of that and that's why I think it's important to have things like this where you can just adjust the volume a little bit to one take away the clipping of your voice if you've got like a, a booming voice you could cause uh, your, to overpower your microphone um, and also if you've got a quieter voice you can wind up a little bit so that the microphone can hear you a little bit better and therefore your audience can too right let's go back to the bike now if I can I'll have uh shown you a clip at least of uh, me using the road wireless go setup in uh, that previous video where I nearly broke my wrist and uh, it's it's very clear I'm really quite impressed with it it's not a perfect solution um, so yeah I, I, I'm gonna work on this one and get this one working well and then I'll probably transfer this setup to 
my LS2 subverter for off-roading as well. It's not ideal because you've got the open door on the uh, GoPro, but the Ulanzi GP8-7 door is quite handy. It's quite handy indeed. So there's various different ways that you can set up your crash helmet for motor vlogging and uh, lots and lots of alternatives. The wildest thing I really think is a great idea, uh, but what I'd really love to see is um, is GoPro incorporate Bluetooth connectivity for microphones within the camera, or at least have a um, their own wireless adapter or something like that with a three and a half millimeter jack in it like we've got with uh, the audio adapter on on this setup i'm using now but without it plugged into the gopro have that connecting to the gopro via bluetooth the sooner action camera companies realize that what they make isn't generally what people want <laughs> the better as far as i'm concerned it is a game of tweaking though getting good audio is not just about buying expensive equipment my microphones are a testament to that i always buy really cheap ones because they break and then you can throw them away and get a new one without breaking the bank but it definitely doesn't hurt to invest in decent equipment you just got to spend your money wisely but the most important thing to do is to get your microphone placement right. You get that right and your audio will sound 10 times better, whatever setup you're using. If you found this video interesting and you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button. I do make other things other than instructional videos on how to set up a helmet. <laughs> As you can see, I've got this little beta. It's gonna be even littler in a minute. I'm getting it lowered. I've also got a Triumph 765 Street Triple R and a very customised work Gutsy. So if any of those things sound interesting, definitely click that subscribe button. Anyhow, um, yeah, if you like this video, give it a little thumbs up. If you didn't, you can always give it a little thumbs down. But whatever you do, please do drop in a comment. Let me know your GoPro setups and stuff like that, your solutions for sorting the audio out. I do love hearing from you. And uh, maybe you can show me something that I hadn't even thought of. Anyhow, if you ride, ride safe. Take care, and I shall catch you all in the next one. Bye bye for now. Keep them going. Drop the side. Down. Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar. Drop a side. Down.